Hi, Steve, Woodworking Masterclass for Australian Wood Review. Now, instead of bringing you a tip this week, what I thought I'd do is bring you a technique. Recently, I was really fortunate to spend some time with Terry Gordon from H&T Gordon Plains in his factory in New South Wales. And while we are there, we did some videos of uh, various planes and techniques. And Terry shared with me a technique that I thought was absolutely brilliant. And when I came home, I went through my library and found uh, an old book. In fact, it's called The Complete Woodworker. I think it originally printed in um, 1910. And lo and behold, there's the joint that Terry was talking about. Now, what Terry said he can do and actually did, and I would like to share with you, is make a complete drawer using one quarter inch dado plane. That was it. What I'd like to do now is introduce you to Terry Gordon from h and Gordon Plains and allow him to share with you how to make a draw with one quarter inch dado plane. What I want to show here is how I can make a, the drawers for these bedside tables using simply a quarter inch dado plane. That's the uh, bottom of the drawer, quarter inch thick. My two sides, the back, and my drawer front have all been um, dressed and hand planed to finish. We'll be cutting a rebate here using the dado plane. Then we'll be cutting a small dado here, fitting those two together. Back in the old days, it was considered high-class joinery. You don't see it in drawers very often, but I've got an old um, chest of drawers which we put all our milling gear in for making planes. We're in and out that drawer, and it's got lots of heavy stuff in it, and that joint has never given up over many, many years. So this is what tipped me off to think this is a good joint for doing drawers. It's something different uh, to your normal um, uh, straight butt joints or... Uh, uh, dovetail joints. So to start with, I'm going to uh, pick out which side I'll make the front. So I'm going to select that as the front. So I'll have two, a joint here and a joint here. First thing to do, take my cutting gauge and set it at the thickness of the wood. Right. Now, simply run a line this end, a line this end. So we've got crisp lines to work to. We'll swap them. Once again, using wooden dogs because. The ends of these have already been planed smooth. Now this is just a homemade square, but that cleat is exactly square to that side and that side, so I can use it for either side for doing this sort of joint. Now I want to make this rebate on the end, or both ends, exactly half an inch deep. Take my dado plane, and the, f the maximum depth of these dado planes is half an inch, so it'll end up running up against there rather than my um, depth stop. I will put the plane there, which will cut the outside of the dado. Apply a clamp. Just double check, I'm going to cut in the right spot. Okay, so I'm just checking there and ensuring that I'm keeping the plane up against my vertical fence. Just put a bit of wax on the side, or wax your fence there, a little bit on the sole. As I get towards the bottom of the, the rebate, I'll just back the, the knicker off just 
a little bit, so it doesn't leave too much of a mark there. All right, we're nearly down to depth there. Stop cutting. Loosen off my clamp. Now this time I want to put my knicker in the line. Then bring my clamp into position. All right, and that's cutting on the line. As you can see, it would be quicker if I just used a half inch dado plane. Make sure you've got a clean surface there when you're getting close to the bottom so you end up with a clean rebate. See what's starting to happen here. We will now cut a little dado down in here. Just checking that I've got my rebate half an inch deep both ends so it's nice and parallel because that's important. When I'm planing in the vise, I'll be using that part of the plane. So... I've just marked a with a chisel, three sixteenths of an inch, or sorry, five millimetres deep. And that will stop the wood breaking out. So now my rebate's right, I'll come across to the vise. So set the depth stop at Exactly five millimetres. A little bit of wax on the sole on the side. Now it's important that I keep that the fence of the plane, the side of the plane, hard up against the rebate. And there you go. It's We've got a little bit of breakout, but as I said, I've made the, shot, the drawers a little bit wider so I can get rid of that. But as you can see, it's a nice, clean dado cut to five millimetres deep. Now, when it comes to the draw sides, what we've got to do is set up to make a quarter inch wide tongue quarter inch wide and a five millimeter deep so using this mortise gauge and I want and it's exactly half an inch from the edge all right so quarter inch between the two pins and the outside pin at uh, half an inch. Now you mark two lines on the end of every on the end of both sides of the drawer. If you have a preference for the inside of the drawer, then make sure you get these lines on the inside of the drawer. Use these higher dogs to our advantage. So we've got those two and they're going to hold the two drawers together. I'm going to use my square, bring this in. So the square is up against the two dogs and that pulls everything into alignment. And we'll just have a look, make sure the data is going to run there. Pretty nice. And I, all I did there was just make sure the dado is running down the two lines before we start cutting, which it is. Set the depth, at, which will be the same as what you cut on the other one. Double check, five millimetres. Right. Now, I'll just, because I've got my dogs holding the square that way, all I've got to do is push against my fence. I don't need to hold it with a clamp. Thank you. 
when it stops cutting. see very nice fitting joint okay, this is the end of the drawer it's a very similar joint and that's the end of the um, drawer now what we've got to do to finish this drawer off He's put a little rebate on this so the tongue is a quarter inch thick. So set our cutting gauge line there. Get my trusty square in. A quarter inch dado. Put the nicker in the line. Bring my square in. sure everything looks right so I'm keeping an eye on my line that's pretty much it There's the completed, and that's what they call a groove and tongue joint. And I could turn that around and have it that way if you prefer. You can see the, the construction of the drawer is getting there. What we're going to do now is run our grooves along the side and along the front. Now the drawback is the exact size we want to run our groove. Got a uh, scrap piece of wood which is flat and with one straight edge. Then just sit that level with the bottom. Make sure that's the same. Dead blow mallet. Everything looks good. The cut plane is actually quite comfortable to pull. The only tips here are make sure you keep the face of the plane up against the, your guide. That was just a little bit of wax again. Pretty much there. As you can see a nice neat groove. Draw sides. Probably a good idea at this stage to make sure your bottom is going to fit in there without wrestling with it. Well thanks Terry and I hope you enjoyed that as much as we did filming it. It's marvellous isn't it? You don't need a huge amount of tools to make furniture. One tool, one drawer. And I've actually expanded on it a bit further and currently am planning to design and build a cabinet using that joint as the main carcass construction. No dovetails, no mortise and tenons, no tricky mitre joints, just a simple dado plane. So until next time, this is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe and enjoy your woodworking.